Hey everyone, welcome to another episode, episode 48 of the Cup of News. I'm excited for this one. We did a lot of research to get on to this topic. It's going to be a little piggyback from the th topic from yesterday. But before that, we appreciate everyone that listens to the show. It means the world to us. If you hit the five star, give us a review. And any updates, cupofnurses.com. And with the whole movement, we are frontlinewarriors.com. We'll be hanging out there. Pete, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. This love episode, we're going to be exploring the deepest, darkest crevices of our bodies. We are going to take a look at our gut microbiome. Something that's been overlooked for years. <clears throat> and scientists only have started discovering and doing research about our gut microbiome in the late 1900s. So this is still something that's still emerging, still being researched upon, and still something that really fascinates a lot of people. Because I'm not sure if you guys know, as humans, we are 99.9% .9 alike. So Matt and I here are alike as humans. Our DNA is 99.9% .9 similar. The only thing that differentiates us is the 0.01%. And it's crazy how that, that, that just shows how similar we are. And it just shows what minute changes you need to kind of change certain things and certain aspects of humans. sequence, yes. Mm -hmm. And what, how do we compare it to like the bacteria, for example? I think it's like 100 to 1 when it comes, comes to the genome. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're literally 50% human genome and we're 50% microbiome. Right. And we've realized that there's this connection that we're going to discover and talk about that is affecting us on a completely, you know, bi-directional level. Mm -hmm. It's affecting us what we're eating and then that's affecting the brain, the mind, and also vice versa. If you feel anxious, that's affecting the gut mm -hmm. microbe. Many people associate a, uh, a communication and a connection between our gut and our brains. So like, for example, before you even eat a food, you look at the food and you start salivating, right? Because your brain processes that, hey, you're gonna start eating soon, so it's gonna build up more stomach acid and make you salivate, right? So you got the communication where the brain dictates and directs the GI tract, jam motility and all that. But research is coming to show that the gut also has a direct effect on our brain. Yeah. So not only is our brain controlling what the gut does, the gut also contains certain aspects of, of, of our brain. And that's where where the gut flora and, and the gut microbiome actually is able to influence mood, influence behavior, and just influence the way you feel. That's where that connection is. It's not just like a one-way system where the brain tells the gut what to do, it's both. And it makes complete sense because the only place you ingest foreign objects is through the GI tract, through your mouth, right? Yes. So they're exposed to all this outside environment and environment st stimuli, and their DNA and their RNA and their genetics differ from ours. But yeah, we're still living together. And, and somehow we have to yeah, correlate. Mm -hmm. Our digestive system is truly beautiful. Like the gut microbe has, there's 100 trillion microbes up to in our uh, GI tract. And it, it, it's considered to be full of bacteria, fungi. There's uh, protozoa, there's viruses. And they all live inside of us. And it makes up genes. We've noticed that these metabolites, that these offspring that produce these, the uh, bacteria it, you know it's regulating our hormones our gut and it's it's been shown that the microbe is actually up to like five pounds in total weight mm. and it has to do with a lot of things it digests our food it regulates our immune system it protects us from other disease causing organisms such as c diff which we see in the hospitals with a lot of antibiotic use and believe it or not the gut microbe actually produces vitamins mm. they produce vitamin b vitamin b12 thiamine, riboflobin, vitamin K, and it's only the 1990s since we just started discovering this. Mm -hmm. And it's wild because they're starting to show this correlation between autoimmune issues, like <clears throat> a lot of diabetes, you get multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, fibromyalgia, things like that, are showing up in people's guts. So they're starting to pair up certain gut flora and gut microbes with the development of these autoimmune issues. So it's not something that's built in our DNA where, where people think that you're genetically predisposed to these things. These, these things in your gut, these bacteria, they're the ones creating these issues for you, right? So you have to fix it in some way, shape or form. And by fixing that, you're ultimately fixing your autoimmune issues by fixing the gut microbial. Yeah, and that's gonna be interesting because maybe in future, 
research, we're going to actually be able to influence the gut and we're going to be able to guide the treatment, meaning mm -hmm. we're going to be able to increase a specific flora, specific type of bacteria, which is going to influence or prevent you from getting like a neurodegenerative disease. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And some fun facts about, about your gut flora is when you think of a place on this earth that has a lot of animals, has a lot of plants growing, you think of a rainforest, the Amazon rainforest. And if what's interesting to, to know is the flora in your gut, all the markers in your gut, you have more in your gut than, than there is plants, animals in a rainforest. That's what organisms are in your body. And they outnumber all the animals and plants literally in the most luscious places in the world. And w mm -hmm. one of the things that affects like the gut microbes a lot and it's, you know, used in the hospitals, antibiotics. So one of the, like the little fun facts is like when you're using antibiotics, it's like dropping, it's creating a war zone. You're literally changing the composition. You're changing, you know, you're imbalancing everything. And there's short-term and long-term side effects to that. You might have indigestion of specific foods just from antibiotic use. Mm -hmm. You might have like allergic reactions that could, you know, develop. Or also like you might have Im immune and metabolism issues. Mm -hmm. Some scientists even call our gut our second brain. A lot of people don't know that majority of serotonin is produced in your gut. So look how that directly influences your brain. If you don't have serotonin, you're going to have an, an issue with happiness and being being content and just, just staying well and mindful. So that just shows you how big of a correlation there is with the gut and and with the brain and those those responses. It's just you're so close. Our health and us as humans are directly correlated with our gut health. And what's the crazy thing about it is they are technically living living their own lives, and we're living our own lives because our DNA is different. But yeah, we need them for survival and they need us for survival. Yeah. And, and you know how like the, it, it's, it's like this bi-directional level. So we have the organism and we have the environment. So the environment is almost as us. Mm -hmm. And we think we're in control of so many things that we do in life. The microbe is almost in control of us, like from like that perspective that we are the earth and they're like the, the people mm -hmm. on it. And they have a lot of influence. You know how like we're causing pollution and climate change potentially? We're, they're doing the same thing but based on what we are introducing into their, you know, into the microbial mm -hmm. field. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting uh, point. Yeah, and, and the problem with, like, you know, Western society is we're losing the diversity. You know, just like when we say eat a vast majority of vegetables and fruits and fibers and beans, the more colorful the better because you're creating biodiversity. Mm -hmm. West Western civilization has lost that in the microbe mm -hmm. from you know, spending too much time indoors. We're not playing in the dirt as much. We're not, you know, we're bound to cities. We're losing biodiversity and that's negatively affecting us mm. because we have a smaller gut microbe. So now there's less diversity that's introducing different pathogens. For example, when I took, you know, we're going to get into Viome, but when I did like a, the gut test before, I had too much viruses in my gut uh gut lining for example so i had to avoid apples and tomatoes for example mm, for, for some reason sometimes if you eat a specific food that is known to carry a specific virus you might have inflammation just because of like that microbial warfare that's happening mm. inside your gut yeah from just specific foods that's very interesting I'm, and i'm excited to to like do our little biome and see where that where that takes us but before we hop into the benefits of having a uh benefits of having an appropriate gut flora is one thing that i looked at and i found really curious as well is you know how we have the bmis and that's supposed to predict how healthy you are based on your body mass index it tells you yes. what, tells you if you're obese or lean or whatever so these scientists are actually able to tell you if you are lean or or, or obese or fat just based on your gut flora and shown to be 90 percent accurate and that's a lot better than a bmi because that just takes basically weight and height into into this perspective compared to like a gut flora it's going to show you what you're lacking and obviously you're lacking it because you're not getting in your diet because you're not getting it through your diet you're not able to make this this flora grow yeah and it's also like a good indicator of inflammation mm -hmm. if you have a bad microbe you are usually inflamed so that makes sense that your waist would be larger and more inflamed and if they measure that and based on bmi calculations inflammation is a great indicator of poor health right mm -hmm. And I, I've realized that, you know, I'm, I'm listening to doctors and different people speak. They, they say a lot that disease is based on inflammation. 
And when we're going to talk about the microbes, what they release based on what we're consuming, inflammation is a topic that continuously keeps on, you know, popping up. Not only are you causing inflammation in the gut lining of the stomach, but this is correlating into the brain. And that's neuroimmunoendocrine inflammation. Now that's ruining neurons. And that's when you start thinking about the correlations between neurodegenerative diseases based on just the gut microbe. And it's crazy to think about it. Inflammation is basically your body attacking itself. It's causing these reactions within yourself. So it's supposed to be a protective mechanism that for some reason goes haywire and is unable to control itself. And it just leads to these det detrimental effects. It's unfortunate that it does it, but it's done in our body's best, best judgment and best benefit. But the fact that we live side by side with ourselves or with our cells, like things like that happen where there's not always going to be that communication and sometimes good cells are going to be detrimental in certain locations. And that's why some cells like C. diff and E. coli, you need E. coli in, in, your, in your intestines, in your guts, right? But if it goes to other locations, it becomes detrimental. But they're just trying to live. They're not trying to de destroy you. It's just how these cells function. It's how they, they replicate. It's just what they do. Yeah, it's, it's a pathogen. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's your responsibility. That's what it comes down to when it comes to even like being conscious and, you know, the five pillars that we talk about being well, for example, you have to take health into your own accountability mm -hmm. because, you, you know, pathogens don't know right from wrong, just like the brain doesn't know right from wrong when it comes to habit forming. Right. It's just seeking the, le the least amount of energy, same thing bacteria, they're just traveling when, and unfortunately you have a loose tight gut, uh, junction in your lining and now you're causing inflammation. Right. Uh, you know, aside from the gut microbes taking advantage of us and, you know, causing issues, there's actually a lot of benefits that we're going to talk about. So you have the breakdown of potential toxic compounds. They, you know, synthesize specific vitamins, amino acid, acids. When it comes to fats, uh, fast digestion, uh, those are simple carbs, lactose, and things like that. Those things get absorbed quickly into the small intestines. Mm -hmm. When it comes to high-fiber foods, they actually travel down to the large intestines. That, that, that's where they get broken down. And your body produces specific uh, metabolites. This is what the gut microbe does. Mm -hmm. It produces short-chain fatty acids, trimethylamines, amino acid metabolites, and vitamins. So... The main thing we're going to focus on here is the this short chain fatty acids. There has been a lot of research that shows that they play an important role in muscle function. So things like muscular dystrophy is linked to this mm -hmm. uh, possible prevention of chronic infections, including certain cancers, bowel disorders, and also SCFAs have a specific role in neuroimmunoendocrine regulation, which has everything to do with the whole bidirectional relationship between the brain and the body with the vagus nerve mm -hmm. yeah the gut is, is very overlooked i feel like we we're, we're in a place where your gut is just as important as your brain but it seems to me that we are more focused on neurology and neurological disorders stemming from from the brain and being caused by by the brain because it influences your brain right i feel like the brain gets more attention than the gut but it just is important yeah, and that's why it's just been the 90s. And I was talking to you, you know, off air that just like diabetes gets overlooked and it's just mm -hmm. a little Band-Aid. And we take a pill trying to just dump the sugar and that's a Band-Aid. Same thing here. We're realizing that oh, maybe it's Alzheimer's and, you know, MS. And we're taking pills to prevent the breakdown of these neurons, which leads to neurodegenerative diseases. What if that's just putting a little Band-Aid on it? Mm -hmm. If we're not really fixing the the gut bacteria that's, you know, causing the main issue, just like anxiety or depression. If depression is linked to gut health, mm -hmm. then you changing just the chemical structure of your brain by taking a pill is just a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. But you always have that same message that downregulate those genes or whatever it is that do doesn't produce that chemical for your brain. Yeah, there's definitely a miscommunication between like, the science community and the knowledge that a typical person knows about the gut. Because when you think about eating food, you, you, you just usually think in a way where you eat food and somehow it gets turned into energy and it makes your cells function. But the concept is you eat the food and your, your gut biome and your gut microbial actually break down that food. So they are responsible for that food breakdown and they're also responsible for the compounds and elements that, that are released from those 
those um, like from those gut cells and your gut biome that create the functions of the liver of the brain right so you need this gut flora to process the food and turn that food into usable resources for the rest of your body yeah so you're you're relying on your gut microbiome to make you function as a human because they're the ones that are making everything work because if you don't have any gut flora you can't break down any food and you can't process food appropriately and properly so you wouldn't be able to live so we are completely relying on them yeah that's that's amazing mm -hmm. and going back into the short chain fatty acids so there's a hypo hypothesis that's you know been conducted on animal studies that shows that gut, gut microbiota dis, dysbiosis has been impacted with behavior and neurological pathology such as depression alzheimer's parkinson's disease and there's like a little if you go on our show notes we actually have an image of how you know this looks so you have the intestinal epithelium like layer and you have channel communication pathways so there's also, you know, we talk about a lot about the vagus nerve, correct? That's one of the bidirectional ways of, you know, transfer. There's also the blood-brain barrier, which we're going to talk about. And there's also hormones that travel from this, these epithelial cells into the bloodstream. So these are the metabolites that are literally sending messages to our neurotransmitters to act a specific way. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research that also shows that these microbes actually affect pregnancies for example so if if a pregnant woman uses antibiotics or probiotics or various diets or there's specific immune activation when you're sick there's you know that actually modulates the microbe and modulates the neurodevelopment and your offspring might have specific um disease diseases mm -hmm. or specific symptoms based on this yeah. This has been tested in rodents, but it's also correlating in humans. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about leaky gut, that's there's like a gap between the tight junctions, right? So these tight junctions, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but these tight junctions are around around basically your vessels and your and your gut and your GI tract, right? Yes. And then leaky gut is basically caused by you consuming bad food or food that is kind of toxic to your body and this gap these side junctions kind of loosen up a little bit and then things are able to to escape in between those those little areas right and, and that the, yeah and that also happens because of cytokines and other metabolites and what happens is inflammation causes you know vasodilation the circulatory system and with those endothelial cells it causes dilation as well in that junction mm. So you know how normally things get transported through like these cells is you know you need the receptor sites and mm -hmm. proteins. Here you just have like open cells in between. They could they could just travel. Mm -hmm. So now you have these microorganisms that could catch a ride in the bloodstream, and they could just do anything they want. Right. And this becomes an issue which um, we could talk about when when it affects a blood brain barrier. And a blood brain barrier is a similar concept that I talked about how there's cells around our vessels and our blood brain barrier is basically a more secureness or secure system around our vessels so it doesn't allow as much compounds and organisms and just things in your blood through it right so certain medications can't cross the blood brain barrier because it's more secure and there's like a there's a barrier around all your vessels that allows for nutrition and different compounds and cells to to move between but it's just a lot more more tight niched in the blood brain barrier yes that's why a lot of medication are don't go through it and it's really hard to find medications that do cross it just because it's so so complex and and just so hard to get through yeah and one of the issues too with the blood brain barrier is when the function of the micro glia cells get affected so one of the commonalities in dementia and all these neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's is chronic neuroinflammation and that's involving the overactivation and dysregulation or mic microgialia and that's literally an immune microphage cell in the brain mm -hmm. so you have the immune system all over the body you have it in the gut which you know activates things and regulate things and creates the whole cytokine storms but you also have it in the brain mm -hmm. and microphages are used to just clean up old neurons old cells but it's also used for immune function regulation, right? Mm -hmm. So they remove da damaged neurons, and that's what keeps a central nervous system healthy. Yeah. But when these microglias get activated, 
when it comes to having bad metabolites from having a bad diet, mm. what happens is they change their morphology. So they have, they change their secretions. And when these cytokines get produced, they cause pro-inflammation. Mm. So now you have reactive oxygen. Now you have nitrogen species that, you know, that are activated by this and that's causing the neuron cell death ultimately. Mm. And that's also causing a loss in the blood brain barrier. Same way, there's also that endothelial junction, just like you explained in the gut lining, it's also in the blood brain barrier. Mm. So that tight junction loosens up and you, you, you could have a potential brain damage. Yeah, it's, it's just like mind blowing where science is, is taking us that a few years ago, you know, a few centuries ago, people had no idea about how big of an influence your gut microbe has on life. And it's crazy because like it just keeps blowing my mind and I, I'm going to keep bringing it up is that you have a living ecosystem in your gut that helps you function and makes you function and influences the way you function. And they have different DNA than we do as humans. They're living in their own lives. And I was watching one, I think it was Tom Bio, the podcast that one of our buddies sent us regarding yeah. like that, that gut doctor. And he was a vegan. He was talking about the gut and the importance of, uh, of, a, of a healthy gut microbiome. And he said something very interesting. And he said that one generation in your gut is 20 minutes. So you go through three generations in an hour. So it's like your life, your parents' life, and your grandparents' life, and then your grand grandparents' life. Wow. And that's how it cycles. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. And, and because it just makes this so resilient. So if you have issues that stem from the gut, they're easy to change because your gut flora is so resilient and it's going to, to adapt and grow once you give it the proper nutrient. And that's basically your food. And as, as technology moves forward and research moves forward, we're going to keep seeing more of these break, breakthroughs that are correlating your gut health and your brain. Because we think about it, our gut literally digests and processes everything that we consume. Yeah. I brought it up a little bit ago, but I'll, I'll bring it up again. Our gut processes all the information, it breaks down food, it feeds our bodies. And if you're not building the right gut flora, it's going to not produce the right effects and the right mechanisms to create a proper functional body. It's gonna affect your liver, it's going to affect your, your stomach, your kidneys, your heart, your brain. And it's not going to be able to function properly. And that's crazy to think about that it actually stems from your diet. Yeah. And, and that's what we have to work on in this like field for ourselves and to be conscious of it and be well ultimately is we have to tackle food on and we have to be conscious of the food choices because there's an influence between brain health, the gut microbe and the way you're feeling. Mm. So you, you have to feed your gut microbes a proper thing. And I always talked about having that color, colorful plate. We could do definitely do another podcast episode comp comparing like prebiotics and probiotics, mm -hmm. whether they're actually beneficial. I've listened to a podcast before that says, unfortunately, when you take probiotics, it's good. You get that, you know, the actual microbes in the gut. They help a little bit, but it's very, very temporary because they don't develop a home. So they just travel right through. Yeah. The whole point is to feed and nourish the gut microbes that are already in the body. Yeah. So and it's like you're giving, giving you the seeds, but you got to give it the soil to grow, right? Yes, in, in that concept. And, you know, it starts with sleep, too, and taking care of yourself, mm. not eating processed foods. And that's how you prevent these diseases. For example, you start looking at the breakdown of these metabolites. For example, if you're consuming foods that are high in cholines and that produces a specific metabolite, well, in order to prevent that metabolite from forming and that from gas from forming that's harming a specific body part, you have to reverse engineer that. Yeah. And I, I talked about the four metabolites that are on here. Every single one of them, we could, we could go deeper into it and we could talk about how they're affecting specific gamma receptors and things like that. But the, it's, it's a rabbit hole mm. when it comes to the gut microbe. This is, it's, we can't cover this in 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. There's just so much to talk about and so much still going on with it and so much different experiments going on where it would take us days and days to look it over and it's like changing every week but one more thing that i found interesting is is that you know how we, last episode we talked about our gut flora and hypertension and one of them said that 80 percent that only 80 percent of people are able to be helped with their blood pressure with with pharmaceuticals so 20 percent people aren't able, able to be treated with pharmaceuticals for their hypertension 
So think about that for other medications, right? Because we, we know that this medication is going to cause this effect, but we have different gut flora, right? So it's going to have a different reaction in everyone's gut differently. So that's why like modern medicine is, is great, but a lot of times it doesn't think about people outside the box and it forgets about people that are not in the majority because they're always focused on the majority, which is good. But a lot of times the people that are, are, are on, the, on the outside looking in, they don't really get helped. So maybe for the people that aren't able to have their issues fixed with pharmaceuticals, with medications, with patches or, or anything like that, maybe all they need is like to reset their gut and maybe change their diet, change what they consume, change how they do things, and you might relieve your symptoms. Or, in the, or in the future, maybe they'll just do a fecal transplantation. That'll be readily accessible, and yeah. we'll see. I'm glad you brought that up because, listen up, folks. In the name of science, Matt and I are going to do a little experiment on ourselves with Viome. It's supposed to be one of the best programs out there or best test kits out there that checks your stool and is able to predict how healthy your gut is. And we're going to do the next step, which actually we're going to do the intelligence test, which actually also takes some blood. Sample your blood. So we're going to send out a stool sample and a blood sample to, to Viome and see what they tell us about our gut health and how healthy we are in general based on our gut flora. Yeah, so they use artificial intelligence to map out the geome. They use RNA transcriptions from the gut to just analyze mm. different pathways, the different metabolites that will actually open up. And you get the full spectrum of what you're eating. They actually provide you, and not, we're not doing no shameless plug in here. This is just a product that we did our research we want to stand by. And it gives you a breakdown of foods that you should be av avoiding. And it'll give you reasons why, just like I talked about earlier, don't eat apples and tomatoes because of a virus. They'll tell you specific foods that they consume, like the cholines and like eggs and almonds and nuts that will affect your sulfur levels and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it really breaks everything down. The more and more we talk about this, I think there's already a few podcast episodes. We, we, we were in a row on this gut health, you know, to you train. It's like, yes, I think the gut really matters a lot. Yeah, it's, it's super important. And on the website, man, I bought the kit, the better tier kit. And supposedly based on a blood sample and a stool sample they get from us, they're able to tell us our gut microbiome health, our cellular health, our mitochondrial health, our immune system health, our stress response health, and also our biological age, which is interesting because a lot of times people associate how old they are based on the year. And that makes sense on a numerical objective, but we all age differently. A lot of our, you can tell when someone's a healthy looking seven year old, a healthy looking six year old, right? So people might be 60, but you could tell which one looks healthier. And that's why maybe this chronological age theory that, that we have, our birthdays, is a simple way to figure out how old we are, but not necessarily the best predictor of how we age as, as a biological are. level. Because our scale tells our, our biological age. And I'm 26, my scale tells me either 25 or 24. But I'm not sure how they base it off of them. I guess, I guess they base it off weight and whatever else they calculated. Yeah, right? they give you like a metabolic age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and if you go on Viome and you get your sample, like they go into like efficiency scores, the protein fermentation scores, gas production, inflammatory activity, gut lining health, metabolic fitness, active microbial diversity. So they they give you a ranking system of all these factors and they give you an overall score of what is your gut health. Mm. So what's cool about this is you you get an idea of how your gut microbe is and then there's ways to improve it. And then ultimately it just starts with you if you want to try to make a difference. Yeah, like Matt has done it before. And I was looking at some of the stats. It provides a lot of information. Like for our whoop bands that, that we wear, we get a lot of stats on our recovery, our, our sleep, how physical we are, how active, active we are. And this provides a lot of stats, but that's based on your gut health and just your, your, your gut flora. So we're going to probably try this out and do another episode regarding our results and how it turned out. And we'll probably go through each category and see what they tell you and what the rationale for each thing is. And that's the beauty about life is that you can be your own experiment. Mm -hmm. You always could try new things and see what, see, yeah, see what could pull off. Mm -hmm. You could, you could definitely reverse your biodiversity age and you actually could like fine tune your mitochondria, for example, in one of those markers. So if you feel like your energies are low, you're maybe you're consuming more caffeine that could be just related to your mitochondria. Mm -hmm. You got to get that kick started somehow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Is that right there? Let's finish it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to check out our website, couplenurses.com. We got a bunch of cool show notes there. We, we link all our research studies there. And don't forget to take a look at wearefrontlinewarriors.com. Thank you so much. Peace.